one of the bills that is our, a, on our front burner and a strong priority is H210. And Dr. Uh, Marissa Coleman is here. We understand that you are extremely busy and today was one of the few times that we could actually have you in. So I'm gonna ask you to introduce yourself for the record and then uh, let us know who you are, what you do, and then uh, your thoughts on uh, H210. So thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Dr. Marissa Coleman. I'm a lead staff psychologist at the University of Vermont Medical Center, as well as um, senior equity, diversity, and inclusion advisor. Um, so I am here on behalf of the University of Vermont Health Network to express the organization's support for H210 and to make some suggestions on improvements of the language of the bill. Perfect. Okay. Should I? I will proceed. Go um, right ahead. Go right ahead. One, one. So at the University of Vermont Medical Center, um, we have established an equity, diversity, an inclusion steering committee actually was established a few years ago. And the committee is made up of staff and leaders that were focused on launching a body of work um, to increase the um, feeling, the sense of belonging for all staff and employees, but also to push forward um, our inclusion efforts. Um, with the assistance of the steering committee, and the organization has held 13 racial equity listening sessions. They're held monthly. Um, they prioritize the voices and perspectives of staff members that identify as Black, Indigenous, and or people of color. Um, we've also partnered with several community organizations and joined with the City of Burlington in declaring racism as a public health emergency with documented action items that stem from that. And we are in the process of finalizing health equity data dashboard and are rolling out several educational initiatives for our staff. So last year, um, at the UVM Health Network, uh, Dr. Brumstead made a statement to our patients and community saying that the network is committed to ongoing careful and meaningful action in an effort to create a culture that is equitable, diverse, and inclusive for all employees, patients, and communities we serve. Each affiliate within the UVM Health Network is engaged in work related to diversity, equity, and inclusion including the formation of steering committees, employee listening sessions, cultural humility training, quality improvement efforts, board of trustee, diversity, equity, and inclusion committees, and many more initiatives. Um, in short, you know, um, we are working at embedding the learning, training, and action at all levels throughout all of the affiliates. So one thing that I wanted to make sure um, to suggest is that as I reviewed um, the bill H210, um, I found two things that I wanted to share with the, with the committee. Um, the first is um, defining BIPOC populations against whiteness is problematic. Um, throughout the bill, um, I, I see this as well as specifically on page 13, item six, the definition specifically for uh, BIPOC is defined as not white. Um, that is not accurate and, um, <laughs> and, centers, <laughs> and centers whiteness as the default um, human descriptor of race and it makes anyone who is not white a racialized version of a human being. Um, I'm happy to discuss why that is problematic and oppressive with language um, if, um, if people on the call would like me to. Um, additionally, the other um, thing that I would like to be considered in terms of improving the language of this bill is to evolve the language around cultural competence to cultural humility. Cultural competence indicates that there is an end point to our learning and our growing, um, and that is simply not the case. Um, it is a lifelong process, and cultural humility demonstrates that um, nobody is going to be perfect at this and that there is um, not a hierarchy in terms of um, progress and engagement and learning, but that really what we're striving for is that people engage in um, the, the, the process of being humble, of recognizing what their blind spots are, recognizing where there are areas to grow and um, feeling empowered to 
own mistakes, receive feedback, but also know where to reach out for more support. So those are two suggestions um, to language that I have for the bill, um, 210. Do you, do you have those suggestions in writing along with your testimony that that we could have, and we'll put it on our webpage, but if you have, I mean, specifically the definition of BIPOC seems, uh, is not an easy one based on the comments that you've just made. And mm -hmm. so clearly your assistance would be extremely helpful. Yes, we can make sure to provide some written testimony around that. That would be great. And then uh, on both, and then cultural humility as compared with Cultural competence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Senator Hardy has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Dr. Coleman, for being here today. Um, I, my question is similar to the chair's in that um, we are, our legislative um, drafting attorney is not with us right now. Um, and she is off, you know, often the one that takes note of language changes. So if you're able to provide your suggestions, I see on page 13 where you're referencing, I'm looking at the bill on my other screen. Um, so I, that's uh, obvious. I'm uh, glad you pointed it out because now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, of, wow, um, you're um, <laughs> exactly. so you pointing that out for us. Um, and if you have suggestions on how to change that, that would be great. Um, and if there are other places in the bill, it's a really long bill that does mm -hmm. this. Um, and then I really appreciate your comments about the cultural competence versus humility. And I, I, is there are there places in the bill that specifically um, that language is used and should be changed and page 12 page 12 okay so if there's a way to point those out too for us that would be great given our time crunch just to make sure that we catch all these before we get the bill and um is it katie is the drafter on this one right um jenny um yeah i think so okay so, so just we'll to make it. sure that our, our drafting attorney. Um, I'll be meeting with her so we'll, we can take care of that. But it would be extremely helpful, Dr. Coleman, to have your mm -hmm. uh, testimony. And everyone then will be mm -hmm. able to look at it and, um, and provide comments. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank uh, you. I'm, I'm yeah. happy to provide all of that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Some of the things you say really hit home with each of mm -hmm. us. And I so greatly appreciate your comments. Uh, how long have you been at, uh, with, the, with the network? So I um, became employed at the medical center in August, 2018. Okay, all right. So you know, Dr. Gibson. Yes. And, uh, yeah. She's my former student. Oh, really? Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, she's great. great. We're, we'll we're gonna get her in again to our committee as well, but she's someone worth working. Yeah, with. you just to clarify, because Gibson can be a popular name, um, Dr. Pam Gibson? Nope, I'm talking about Erica Gibson, the adolescent oh. pediatrician. Yep. Okay, sorry, I'm not familiar. I, oh, I well, you know, it's a big place and lots of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that as you go through the bill, if there are other um, details that you think would offer improvement, we would welcome your comments. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I will good. Start the material that you've requested. It's a heavy lift to do the work that you're doing. Um, and some of us have, it. I personally have experienced trying to lift uh, an organization of over 100,000 100, people wow. to increase their diversity with it. And it, I know the challenges before you. It's, mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter the size of the organization, it's the culture that exists. So. Yeah, thank you for that acknowledgement. It is, and I'm really um, fortunate to have some some wonderful collaborators and partners. Yeah. I feel helpful. yeah, good. Thank you, um, committee. Other questions, uh, Senator Hardy. Thank you. I do have a, another question. Um, since we've gotten beyond the sort of specific details, just sort of in general, will this bill help you with your work? It, do you feel like it would have an impact on what you're trying to do? And if so. Um, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but I, I'd love to hear more broadly. We haven't gotten any direct testimony yet on this from sort of people out in the field. Like how will it impact and help what you're trying to do? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, it absolutely will um, for a number of reasons and probably even more that I'm not even aware of yet. Um, but um, 
focusing first on kind of the educational piece. So within our organization, we are working really hard at rolling out educational initiatives and um, to have the piece included around um, continuing education and setting standards for providers to have even just a baseline um, exposure to cultural humility, to sensitivity would go a long way. It would feel as though we're not pushing as big of a boulder up the hill um, by ourselves. Um, so I think that that will be important. And just as um, as a psychologist, you know, I think it's pretty impossible to provide, um, you know, patient centered care when you aren't treating the entirety of the person in front of you, um, when you're picking and choosing which identities to pay attention to. So I, I feel strongly that um, that should be a requirement. Um, and then just, again, thinking through um, language. I think there's a lot of power in language. And so this will set a precedent that it will have um, impacts. I think that will go even beyond the work that I do, where it normalizes how we speak about our own racial identities, but also um, it, in my um, opinion, especially with the change of um, the non-white verbiage, it will really take, um, it will work on taking out some of the ingrained um, white supremacist uh, characteristics and language that many of us have internalized and um, take, um, don't question. Um, so I'll stop there, but th those are some of the things that I that I feel initially really drawn to. You know, to. look at, the, please include those comments and, and any others that will inform us about the value of the bill uh, right. when you put together your written testimony. Okay. I don't, I'm not asking you to spend hours and hours doing this. It can be bullets because mm -hmm. um, I, know, I know that you're extremely busy. And we, again, appreciate your being able to, to uh, be here. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak with all of you. It's great. Uh, last question. Do you have a relationship with the medical school, understanding that it's the medical school and the, the network are affiliated and associated, but in your work within the curriculum uh, at the school or expanding under understanding, uh, do you do that? So I, I, I do have a um, connection and a role, um, not a, a large one. Um, I um, recently, um, within the Office of um, Medical Student Education, um, I'm the well-being advisor, so I offer um, support. I sit on uh, wellness committees, um, and I also offer support for students um, that may um, be struggling for a number of reasons. It was, my position was created to not exclusively provide support to BIPOC students, but to certainly prioritize um, the, the care um, of BIPOC students. And then I also um, I hold a faculty appointment um, in the School of Medicine, and then I'm a co-advisor for the student group SNMA, um, which is, you know, to increase your aware, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, those are those are my interactions. And then actually on the, as I mentioned, the um, DEI steering committee that we have at the Medical Center, there are partners from um, the Larner College of Medicine as well as UVM. And so we're working on increasing our alignment within those three institutions. Terrific, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. This mm -hmm. is your last chance committee. We have an expert with us in the field. Thank you. Yes, thank Dr. you. Coleman, thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. We very much appreciate your being here. So we'll, we're, 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 we're ending for the day. We need to move on to our, uh, we're on the floor in a few minutes, but thank you. So uh, Nellie, you can take us off. YouTube, please.